Channel 9 Eyewitness News continues right now at 5.30 with Greg Warmer, Vanessa Welch, and certified chief meteorologist Tom Terry. Detectives in Volusia County believe someone purposely left a fake grenade in the middle of a busy road. And that's the kind of world we live in today. And we were there as the bomb squad robot checked the device that turned out to be a firework. It was what happened in Boston. You can't take a chance. Investigators say this situation was no joke. And now they're doing everything they can to track down the person responsible. We first told you about the scene in Daytona Beach Shores at noon. A mile south of Atlantic Avenue near the Coronado Beach Resort was closed for at least two and a half hours. That's where Eyewitness News reporter Blaine Tollison is live. And Blaine, police say they're checking surveillance cameras in that area. Uh, Daytona Beach Shores police are checking businesses that have cameras. They do not have a suspect yet, but they do have cameras all over the place here. They want answers from the person responsible for shutting down A1A and putting this tourist district at a standstill. There wasn't a soul in the road. Daytona Beach Shores police peered down A1A through binoculars at a small dark object in the road said to be a grenade. A passerby spotted it just before 8 a.m. and flagged down an officer. It looked like a civilian pulled a cop over. And then next thing you know, everybody just starts running, and he's pointing to the middle of the road, and that's how we found out what it was. This wall right here was as close as we were allowed to get to the object in the street. It was reported as a grenade, but the bomb squad would determine if it is real or not. Through our camera lens, it looked like a grenade. A robot inspected it and even moved the object. Until we know the facts, we don't know really what it is, but what's happening in this country with what happened in Boston, you can't take a chance. It turned out to be a firework. That looks like an old-style pineapple grenade. Police believe it was placed here on purpose. When it was first found, it was sitting upright, so we believe it was placed there. What's happening today, it's, it's just sad to see that, that you know, somebody would actually do this. Now police are checking surveillance footage to find out who, if they're caught, they could face criminal charges. I checked with two stores in the area, and all they specialize is, in is fireworks, and they do not carry this particular firework, but they did tell me about it. They say it is intended to be a smoke bomb. When police find out more about this, we'll let you know. We're live in Daytona Beach Shores, Blaine Tollison, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. You can check out more video of the bomb squad and the fireworks on our website. Just log on to WFTV.com slash video. And now for the latest on the Boston Marathon explosions. We're waiting to see if investigators will be holding a news conference to tell us whether or not they have a suspect in Monday's bombings. Meantime, we are getting some new video just into the newsroom that shows us exactly what it must have been like to be near the explosions. And we want to warn you, the sound you're about to hear of the first explosion and then the second, exactly 10 seconds later, are jarring. Again, we just got that video into our newsroom. That was on the side of that explosion. And you see that and you can really feel for those folks and you feel that impact. You do. I knew it was coming and I still jumped. Yeah, that was wild. Now, the man who shot the video says that he gave a copy to the FBI and Boston police for their investigations. And we are putting that video on our website, WFTV.com, if you want to watch it again and listen to it as well. Happening right now, Seminole County's massive effort to rezone elementary schools is finally coming to an end. The school board is set to approve the superintendent's recommendations for the western part of the county now. Eyewitness News reporter Renee Stoll is live inside the meeting that just started. Renee, this phase has a lot fewer children that will be affected. That's right, the rezoning for the West Phase only moves about 300 students because it only involves five schools. Now, the superintendent's recommendation would be a modified version of Core Committee Plan 457. With this plan, boundaries for Forest City Elementary School would be adjusted. The new boundaries would also relieve overcrowding at Spring Lake. The shift of students will then take up some of the excess capacity at Wakiva and Sable Point Elementary, and there should be no changes to Bear Lake attendance zones. 
Now, I hear public comment going on right now behind me through these doors, so we're going to get back in there in the meeting. We're going to find out what they decide. We're also going to talk to faculty because registration for kindergartners is just two weeks away, so we're going to find out how they're going to put this all together. Of that coming up tonight at 10 and 11. Reporting live at the Seminole County School Board Headquarters, Renee Stoll, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Renee. We'll see you tonight. We checked and investigators still have not caught the person who shot and killed a man in Orlando overnight. We first told you about this shooting on Eyewitness News Daybreak. It happened at a home near Raleigh Street and Ivy Lane. Police have not released the victim's name, but say the 32-year-old died at the hospital. Anyone with any information should call Crime Line at 1-800-423-TIPS. Covering Orange County tonight, Eyewitness News discovered the technology giant Apple is looking to fill some high-paying positions here in Orlando. As Eyewitness News reporter Mark Joyella found out, many believe this is a sign that the region's effort to move from tourism to technology is paying off. Imagine what you could do here. That's Apple's pitch to potential employees. But here isn't Cupertino, but nearly 3,000 miles from Silicon Valley in Orlando. Apple posted seven positions on its job page yesterday. One for a 3D graphics microarchitect, another for a logic design engineer. And these are hardly entry level. One job requires a PhD. When you have even half a dozen high tech paying jobs coming to the Central Florida area by one of the world's most reputable companies. It's, it's huge news. And as more and more tech firms move into Central Florida, downtown Orlando's creative village could one day be a lot like the medical city here at Lake Nona, where hospitals, schools, and other businesses soon attracted new business, biotech firms, anxious to put down roots right here in a place that for years nobody wanted to be. According to Forbes, a list of the top 25 tech companies doing major hiring shows several companies right here in Central Florida, including Northrop Grumman and Lockheed Martin, which has more than 1,400 openings for jobs paying $60,000 or more. And now, at Apple. I think the whole point of Creative Village is to attract the creative class, but you need those big anchors. And even though Apple is only hiring a few people, seven, eight people, it's still Apple. In Orlando, Mark Joyella, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. While people who work in tech are buzzing, so far Apple's not talking about the jobs the company posted for Orlando or what plans the company may have for Central Florida. We're following major news in Washington tonight where senators have rejected a bipartisan gun control plan that would extend background checks. A ban on assault-style weapons and high ammunition magazines has also been rejected. The rejected rejection of this bipartisan agreement is a major blow to gun control efforts. Other options being considered now include expanding the rights of people who carry concealed weapons, as well as more funding for mental health. We're told the president is expected to speak about this decision at any time and we'll let you know exactly what he has to say and turn that video around for you quickly. Here in Florida, a bill that would allow school employees to carry a gun has passed through the House Judiciary Committee. The bill would allow school principals to designate an employee to carry a concealed gun on school grounds. Despite objections from school boards and district officials, the bill passed with an 11 to 7 vote and will now go on to the House floor. Residents in East Orange County may be seeing some smoke in the sky because of a large controlled burn in the area. Sky Witness 9 HD was over the more than 900 acre prescribed burn off Deckner Avenue in the Wedgefield area. Here you see the flames and the large amount of smoke. The Forestry Service though says this fire is under control tonight. Lake County may pull its funding to the managers of its history museum. A private group called the Lake County Historical Society runs the museum. But tonight, county leaders are concerned about how the money there is being spent. Eyewitness News reporter Baron Peterson is live outside the museum in Tavares. And Barrett, the county has now frozen the bank account. They're not suggesting managers here improperly spent any money. They just don't know who in the society has the legal authority to spend it. For years, Lake County's historic courthouse has been home to the county's historical museum. But you can't have much of a museum without exhibits. But all over this place, many of them have been removed. Partly over a dispute among the museum's current managers, members of a private group called the Lake County Historical Society. When there's a dispute over who has the financial control over the historical society, then we can't involve taxpayer money in that kind of a situation. 
The county pays the society $20,000 a year to run the museum, and some county leaders now want that money back. The historical society has the money. It's a corporation. I mean, it's, we may not know who the officers are, but the corporation exists. The funding has been frozen while different factions within the society fight for control, which recently included a disputed vote to remove longtime President Bob Grenier, who then removed some of the exhibits, which are his personal property. The county fired off a letter ordering an audit of the funding and instructions to the society to legally identify its current officers. I'm discouraged that, uh, that the letter apparently wasn't taken to heart because the county's funding, unfortunately, uh, is in jeopardy right now. County leaders want to know who the legally elected officers are by the end of the month or all bets are off. Now, back in 2009, this museum had a county-employed professional curator, but she and the staff were let go due to budget cuts. Reporting live in Tavares Lake County, Baron Peterson, Channel 9, Howie DeSeuss. Covering news where you live, county by county, in Orange County, tomorrow, World Wrestling Entertainment is expected to announce a new development in Central Florida. WWE is not releasing specific details, but there's some speculation it may be opening a training center. That announcement is scheduled for 1130 in the morning. We'll let you know what happens. In Lake County, construction of a new $540,000 train depot in Tavares is right on schedule. The depot is being built on Main Street along Lake Dora on the original historic site of the city's former station. That station was built back in the late 1880s. The depot will be the new home for the Tiberias Chamber of Commerce and the Orange Blossom Cannonball. It's expected to open May 1st. It's video so graphic we can't show it on TV. I asked the head of this school why students were watching it in class. And I'm watching where we have the best chance of seeing fog by morning and I'll show you County by County next. Eyewitness News uncovers the important local stories you won't see anywhere else. We first exposed the hazards at Wheatley Elementary in Apopka back in February. She's been trying to move up a construction date for a new school here. It's a shame it had to take so long and it had to take you guys to get involved. Asking the tough questions. Are you telling them there's fertilizer and sewage in their water? Digging deeper. Investigative reporter George Spencer has dug deeper. He spoke only with Eyewitness News. Experience the difference of Channel 9 Eyewitness News every day at 5. It's coverage you can count on. A Volusia County father is upset that a private school teacher showed students video of an abortion in class. The headmaster of Trinity Christian Academy in Deltona told us he has no regrets. Eyewitness News reporter Lori Brown asked if he plans to show the same video to other classes. She was disgusted by it, grossed her out. This dad asked us to not show his face because he does not want his daughter to face any repercussions at school. But he thinks Trinity Christian Academy in Deltona crossed the line. The school showed 11th and 12th graders video of an abortion. I haven't seen a, a video of an abortion, so for someone that age to see something like that, yeah, it can leave an effect. She can't get in to see rated R movies, but they're showing abortions in school. The school says it did send out an email to parents ahead of time, and on this guide given out to teachers, it says, tell people what they are about to see. Don't trick them. What we do here is teach the children the truth from a biblical worldview. TCA headmaster Dennis Robinson is making no apologies for the video. In the state of Florida, a 14-year-old girl can go into any of the clinics that offer abortions and get one without parental consent or even notification. These were older than that. It's critically important that these children know the gravity of their decisions. The video was made for classrooms by Scott Klusendorf, a nationally known pro-life speaker. Once you start talking about the ultimate questions, like do humans have value for what they are or what they can do? Robinson admits that the video is graphic, but he says that is the point. In Deltona, Lori Brown, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Students were told if they did not want to watch the video, they could leave the classroom. And we want to know what you think. Join the conversation on our Facebook page by logging on to Facebook.com slash WFTV. Orange County investigators say they caught two more suspects in a brazen heist at Tijuana Flats. You may remember when a truck smashed into the restaurant in Avalon Park to steal the safe last May. That truck was found broken down nearby. One suspect was caught last year, but now Robert Kreitz and Daniel Pettis are also facing charges.
after some DNA evidence linked them to the crime as well. A plan to spend $200,000 to help Seminole County residents conserve water seems to be sinking. Yeah, the county put that money aside for a toilet rebate program. It would pay water customers $100 so they could replace their old toilets with some newer models that conserve water. The county expected 2,000 people to take advantage of this program, but so far, fewer than 400 people have switched out their toilets. What's going to happen to the money that was set aside for this program that wasn't used? Uh, it'll be put into other programs. I mean, we have, we have other water conservation programs, there are initiatives that we utilize. And the county also plans to ask for an extension of that program next Tuesday. The Cocoa Beach Police Department is working to keep prescription pills out of the wrong hands. Next week, officers will collect any unwanted or expired medications. Residents can drop off their pills at the Cocoa Beach City Hall on Saturday, April 27th. The event runs from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and all of the collected medication will be destroyed. Marion County officials are working to keep people from stealing historical artifacts from parks. The County Commission is debating whether to create an ordinance that would outlaw the unauthorized removal of historical artifacts from county parks. Officials say right now the county is powerless to prevent people from unearthing pieces of the past and just keeping it for themselves. New lighted basketball courts could be coming to a popular Daytona Beach Park. Leaders will decide on an $80,000 grant to build the courts at the Cypress Recreation Aquatic Center on George Ingram Boulevard. According to city documents, the city would have to come up with a match, which has been partially paid for. Leaders will vote at tonight's regular commission meeting. We'll let you know if this is a slam dunk or not. <laughs> George Waldenberger in again tonight for Tom Terry. Yeah. Greg, you know we are partial to nines uh, here at Channel 9, but uh, did we see a 90 in your five day? Ah, uh, you did. Uh, uh, let's too talk early for that. Yes. Now. Well, maybe tomorrow's too early for it. It will be after tomorrow. How about <laughs> that? Right. Does that work? Uh, let's talk about right now. The high was 85, which is warmer than average in Orlando. It was 86 seven in Claremont, Daytona Beach, Titusville, Cocoa Beach, all 81 degrees for highs today, 82 in Melbourne. And so another warmer than average day that brings our average daytime high temperature this month over 85 degrees. When you compare that with average, we're about two to three degrees warmer than normal. But we've only figured in the first half of the month. We have the rest of April. So this will likely go up at least a little bit in our warmer than average April. Beautiful looking shot here at Cocoa Beach. But can you see this? This dark cloud here, there's a little bit of rain, at least ice isolated rain offshore falling from just a few of these clouds. And if I show you Doppler 9 HD, you can see what I'm talking about. Just an isolated sprinkle here tracking into uh, Volusia County. We're talking about Creighton, Maytown, and Farmton. You see just a few isolated showers there tracking in. Down into northern Brevard County as well, Kennedy Parkway North. Just a few of these sprinkles are actually hitting the ground into Seminole County. One little shower tracking north of Geneva. And then we've also been monitoring this wildfire, at least prescribed fire burn south of uh, Bithlow and some of the smoke drifting near OIA. That's a prescribed burn, but some of the smoke right now seems to be clearing up a little bit. So for the next couple of hours, we'll include a slight chance for a sprinkle in Brevard County. After that, we'll be talking about fog. Once again, late tonight into tomorrow morning, especially around areas where current fires are going on. That's where we could see some fog and smoke and reduced visibility by morning. So checking county by county, Leesburg used this around 65 degrees by morning. Your morning low temperature, Altamont Springs, Sanford, Oviedo, Loma Woods community around 65, 66 degrees. And watching for patchy fog really in all our zones, nothing terribly widespread, but again, just mind those areas near current ongoing fires. Now for tomorrow afternoon, 87 degrees, we'll have a 10% chance for an isolated afternoon shower in the forecast. And Here's what Vanessa and Greg were talking about. 90 degrees on Friday after that. That's when we get our cold front that will not only cool us down, but it'll bring us a chance for thunderstorms on Saturday. So here's your five day forecast. The weekend always in view, showing 90 on Friday with a slight chance for rain and thunder. Saturday is our best chance for thunderstorms at 82. Then 80 on Sunday with a 30% chance for rain. Their children were shot in a home invasion that police say was planned to take out a key witness. It's a never-ending movie. That New at 6, these parents tell us what scares them the most about the breakdown within the Orange County Corrections Office. And breaking tonight in Boston, authorities have identified a suspect in Monday's bombings. And we just found this new video of the two explosions at 6. We're waiting for an update from the FBI. Local news never stops, and neither does Channel 9 Eyewitness News Daybreak. 
Covering breaking news, the latest local news, and reporting new information on the major news from overnight. Plus, we'll give you an accurate forecast for the day ahead and traffic reports to help get you where you need to be. We never stop working to make sure you have the latest information on the day's top stories. Experience the difference of Channel 9 Eyewitness News Daybreak, 5 to 7 a.m. every weekday morning. It's coverage you can count on. Tonight's primetime lineup on WFTV is brought to you by Lexus of Orlando. Covering Orange County, Orlando wants to bring bikes to city streets for all to share. The European concept of bike sharing is gaining ground in major U.S. cities, and now Orlando hopes to capitalize on this craze. Eyewitness News reporter Anthony DiLorenzo shows us how it would work. Unlocking the future of sustainable transportation in Orlando could be as simple as this. So instead of taking a taxi or a bus or driving your car, you're able to take a bike share bike from one location, ride it around and drop it off at another. The city is preparing to put a bike sharing program out for bid and down the road in a neighborhood near you. This is something that w was great for our city. We certainly are supportive of it. Right now, a handful of vendors are putting together proposals. One of them is Ryan Respecki, founder of Social Bicycles. He set up similar networks in cities like San Francisco and Tampa. Orlando could be next. It's extremely flat. Um, it obviously has good weather for most of the year, um, and it has a bit of a downtown core that you can work with. The city and developer hope by leaving your car behind, it'll help cut down on congestion and increase convenience by getting around a crowded city on bikes like these. The city would supply the land, vendors would build docking stations or hubs near Lynx, Lake Eola, and eventually at Sunrail Station. You drive to the light rail, then you take the light rail into the city, and then you use the bike for the last mile. While still in the planning stages, the city foresees the rubber meeting the road next summer. In Orlando, I'm Anthony DiLorenzo, Channel 9, Eyewitness News. That project goes out for bids next month. A new bill has been passed that will limit how the Orange County Sheriff's Office uses its drones. Today, Governor Rick Scott announced that he will sign that bill into law. The new law will only allow officials to use the drones with a warrant from a judge during a high risk of a terrorist attack or during a case of imminent danger, such as a missing persons case. Orange County officials say they only use their drones to track suspects, spot forest fires, and monitor disasters. Today, Cocoa Police hosted a luncheon for the bike riders, support personnel, and police escorts of the Tour de Force. Here you see dozens of cyclists riding in Cocoa today. The Tour de Force is a group of law enforcement officers and volunteers who ride their bikes from Miami to Daytona Beach over the course of five days. This is all to raise money and awareness for officers who were killed or seriously hurt in the line of duty, as well as money for their families as well. All new at 6, Orlando's mayor puts all the rumors to rest. We are marrying the world's leading tourist destination with the world's most popular sport. Where the new soccer stadium will be built. And what we found in emails from the Osceola County School Board chairman that could get him in trouble. 